This episode of Lost Anarchy Presents has been brought to you by Ziggurat.com. All right, so I'll set this up now. So I can hear it, right? Ziggurat.com, and I am videoing. All right, hopefully we have a camera. Officer, another water tank. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you, brother. Is it recording? Is it? Okay, cool. All righty. Cool. Just give me one second uh, here. Time, okay. <laughs> and how do you pronounce your name? Uh, it's pronounced Vivek. Vivek. It rhymes with steak. It's the easiest way to remember. Vivek. Oh. Vivek. Well, I, I got it. All right. Uh, sorry, guys. Just give me one second. It's all good. I'm preparing too, my friend. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah, we're like three cameras out. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We interviewed the, uh, what was it? We interviewed the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We interviewed the guys from uh, The Last Ship, and our camera died. Oh, no. And then after that, we had to interview the, uh, the guys who do all the scores for all the movies. So, like, I literally had to, like, improvise with this and phones and shit. So, it's like, ah! And, and yeah. we, can't, we can't charge anything until we get to our hotel, see how it goes. So, you know, ready, Jesse? Trying to figure out how Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Yours is gonna do audio. I'm gonna do audio, I'm gonna animate it. I do animate. Uh, I do animate. Are you being serious? Yeah, I actually. That's awesome. I actually animate all my. Uh, anima- uh, all my your your oh, wow, that's, that's awesome. And I will video for my phone. Alright. Alright, so. That's fantastic. I mean, like, we'll do both. So, uh, all we're right. with the, we're with the vague creator of The Fifth Beetle. Indeed. And tell us about what The Fifth Beetle is. I know you're doing a movie about it. Yes, so it is a graphic novel that's out right now and doing wonderfully well, and we're also uh, developing a film version. It's uh, it's called The Fifth Beetle. The full title is The Fifth Beetle, The Brian Epstein Story, and that's what it's about. It's the story of Brian Epstein, who was the man that discovered the Beatles when they were an obscure, relatively unknown Liverpool band. Were they playing at strip clubs? Uh, they were playing at basement clubs, so close. Uh, and uh, right. Yeah, so you know you know you know the drill. Well, I, I know I know about the Pete Fish. I know about Pete Fish. I know about Pete Fish. I never I didn't know about the boy. Yeah, Brian Epstein. So he, he, as I said, he discovered them when they were relatively, relatively obscure. They were not even the most popular band in Liverpool, and he guided them to the unprecedented international stardom that we, we know them by today. And he did all that while also being gay and Jewish and from Liverpool. And in the 1960s, those were three significant obstacles. Um, you know, it was literally a felony to be gay. Uh, Anti-Semitism was pervasive in the country, and Liverpool, prior to the Beatles, was a town that had no cultural influence to speak of. So, uh, so it's a fascinating story, both from the Beatles' perspective as well as from the human perspective. So you write or are you the artwork and writer? I'm the writer. Uh, the artists are Andrew Robinson and Kyle Baker, who does artwork, amazing work. I know. I saw some of the. Uh, I saw the uh, trailer on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. The other day. I'm like, oh my god, dude! It's like very, uh, very uh, Art Deco painting, like very, uh, how do I put it? Very Andy Warhol. Yeah. Yeah, that's Andrew Robinson's work. It's uh, he, he did breathtaking work on it. You know, we're nominated for two Eisner Awards, and one of them is for Andrew's work on painting. So, so I hope very I, I hope you win one. Thank you, brother. Thank you, you so much. Keep your fingers crossed for us tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be there for that. I mean, I'll probably be like really camera, but I'll be there. For that. <laughs> I might be too. So well, well they actually sell booze at the war show. They so. sure do. Oh, you oh yeah. Remember that though? Remember that the after war show, right? What's that? Oh yeah, for sure. You better, dude. Yeah. I can't go, but he's going. What the after? Oh yeah, the after party. Yeah, he'll he'll be there. I won't. I'll be uh, just. There's an open the bar. bar. My brain will probably cease to exist it's around. Be a good time. Uh, I'm thinking eleven. I, I, I suppose I've actually not promoted this at man. You know, the North American Museum. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been doing quite a lot of Beatles Fests. Yeah. I did the Beatles Fest in New York. I'm doing Beatles Fest in Chicago. Well, you know, it's like, you know the 50th anniversary now, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm surprised you not milking that yet. Yeah. Not in a rude way. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, the one in the Beatles Fest in New York was held the week of the, of the, the, the actual week of the 50th anniversary, that first couple weeks in, in February. And we did a ton of stuff. I did a whole thing at JFK, uh, you know, to come out at the airport to commemorate the Beatles' arrival. and. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, I, uh, have you picked anybody to? Uh, uh, I know it's based on your film, but have you, have you any actual picks of who's going to play? Like, no, we are we are uh, sort of putting that together right now. I'll be honest; I was very much hoping to announce cast by San Diego, but we're not quite ready for that. Uh, but uh, if you follow us uh, on Twitter at, at Fifth Beetle or um, or uh, we're at Facebook at the Fifth Beetle, uh, we'll be announcing cast I think before too long. So so just. Uh, Keep your eyes on us, and, uh, and we'll be able to reveal that before too long. 
It's awesome. But yeah, I got a check. I don't put my and shit. And no, it's all good. It's a pleasure, my friend. Really great to meet you guys. Thank you for the support. The Vink rhymed with steak. Well, I was saying, like, yeah. Oh, and how do you say your last name? Tawari. Tawari. Okay, yeah, ah. but we did our uh, promo video for the whole uh, thing. Like, yeah, we had a, he, he did his, uh, he did, he says what's upcoming the entire time, and the anime support of what's upcoming. Yeah. And we didn't have a professional. We said Vivek to Tawari. That's pretty close. It's pretty good. Someone, we're green girls here, dude. Come on. Pretty good, man. You know what I mean? Now, my all assistant good. was all weird when I tried to tell her your name. Yeah, I was yeah, like, interview for blah, 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 blah. This isn't yeah. like... Ty, like, where, like, like uh, the way we do Ty, is we actually animate, like I said, we're gonna have a, I do a pull back, I didn't do the last pull back, but like what we do is we animate our shit, we act, oh, I'll show an example, I actually did an animated episode about the, uh, the history of modern rock and roll, about why it's going to shit, because basically punk rock is a teenage girl, and uh, metal is a teenage boy, because how they evolved from a psychology point of view, right? Metal's evolution was, I call it the teenage boy because it's Dungeon Dragons nerd shit, and then they try to get you, and then just like it's just like girls get laid. Right. Because the lyrics suck and musically drums and drums. Right, 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 right. And then metal, and then punk rock evolved into uh, into like a tomboy because they lack a dick, they lack a music. But they evolved with bass and shit. Bass and electronic music, like a vibrant. Yeah, sure. And yeah. also the fashion because they are tomboy, like one of the guys punk rock. Then they get more darker, but they still lack the dick, death rock. And then they uh, get more uh, fucking, uh, then they get more feminine, which is goth, and then they sell out and it's new way. And if you look at the surplus of the 80s, that's what it was. The 80s was hair metal and, hair metal and, uh, new way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fascinating. Are you like going to give him a copy of the mag or what? what? Copy of the mag here? What? Or... I have all out of them. You're out of magazines? I'm all out of mags. Ah, shit. Uh, I can <laughs> give you a card. Yeah, give me a card. Let me give you one of mine. Yeah, of course. That way, I least, that way I can at least send you a copy. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love that. I'm prepared by my car because I've been drinking all day. Ah, good for you. Not all day. Let's have my roll, man. It's called flask. Oh, yeah, you, you still have the flask, you bastard. Yeah, that is me. Awesome. Oh, yeah, dude. I'll follow you on Twitter and shit. I'm on Facebook. Fantastic. I already liked you. I already liked the page on Facebook. Thank you. I, 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 well, I promoted it. I promoted it on. I, like I said, I, I said it I'm promoting or interviewing the, like, the whole weekend. I promoted your thing. But yeah, I got a chat. Pleasure. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe or I will scratch your eyeballs out. This episode has been brought to you by Ziggurat.com. There's nothing fake about it. We're the source for electronic cigarettes. Welcome to the 21st century. Quit smoking and start vaping. No tar, no secondhand smoke, no pollution, no offensive odors. Smoke without the guilt. We carry everything from egos to traditional electric cigarettes and a full line of accessories. So please come on down to Ziggurat.com. All of our flavors are produced right here in the United States. And we can even say our flavors are kosher. So for the best flavors, the best vaping experience, that you can get, go to ziggurat.com. And remember, all the flavor you will get vaping on your cigarette at ziggurat.com. That's Z I G R E T.com.